Could you benefit from building supreme confidence? What would change for you if you played your best when under pressure? What's it costing you to not have the confidence, the poise, and skill to execute when your team needs you most? I've created an exclusive training video designed just for you. I outline the three critical keys to building unshakable supreme confidence and dominating under pressure. You'll also find out how you can apply these to your career today so that you can start to speed up your results and follow a predictable system to get you to your goals. Go to I'mNotYou.com forward slash dominate under pressure. You can go ahead and access that free training in less than two minutes. You'll be learning exactly what I teach my high performance professional athletes and clients about what it takes to dominate. Again, I'm not you.com forward slash dominate under pressure. If you try to get right, then you listen to my dad. <laughs> He's a face. And if you don't want to listen to him, okay, okay. You don't want to, you don't want to get successful. If you ain't trying to dominate, man, then go listen to something else. Welcome, athletes, top performers, and all those looking to gain that killer instinct. That edge you need to dominate in any environment. This is the Sports Motivation Podcast, and I'm your host, Nee Shobo. I played ball and succeeded at the highest levels, and I'm now committed to showing you how you can accomplish the ambitious goals and visions that you have. This podcast is designed to teach you high level strategy, not just fluff and hype. This will cut to the core if you let it, and by taking action on the practical, and next level advice I share, you will see results. Expect that. Expect to be more confident. Expect to be more focused. Expect to be more decisive. And expect to be more fearless. Expect to become the leader your vision needs you to become. So listen up. Take notes. Let's get to it. Welcome to the Sports Motivation Podcast. It's your host, Nee Shobo. Hope the new year is going awesome for you. We're just closing up January, moving into February, still in quarter one. I hope you've laid out some goals. If you do not have goals for this year, go do it, like now. (laughs) If you don't have some clearly identified outcomes, results, goals, whatever you call them, intentions, whatever they are, if you don't know what it is that you want, to be, do, or have this year and do not have plans written to assist you in accomplishing these, you need to do that now, all right? Like, that's that's my challenge to you is go back and listen to the episode where I lay out how to do that for the year. I think in episode five it was when I talked about how to GPS. I, I don't care what method you use, honestly. Just use a method and get to it. Because we got to be moving. We got to be moving. Life is about movement, growth, expansion, evolution. There is no staying the same. You're either growing or you're dying. Which one are you doing? All right? Growing or dying. So this episode is dedicated to Marvin. And Marvin was one of the people who came to my event on New Year's Eve. On New Year's Eve, I had an event in Portland where I invited a lot of people, I had an application process, I, I, I selected a handful of people to come meet with me here live in Portland. Originally, I was going to have it at my house, but I didn't because I had so many people apply. We had to get it in another facility. But um, Marvin was one of the people who came through where I walked people through how to set up their plans for the year and ultimately accomplish their goals and make 2017 the absolute best year that they've ever had. And he came through, man. I, I was, it was really cool to meet Marvin. He's one of the guys who listens to this podcast. And he flew all the way from Thailand, actually, um, which was awesome. So anyway, me and Marvin were talking afterward, and we got to talking about life's purpose. We got to talking about purpose. And this, it fires me up, all right? And so, Marvin, this is, this is an extension of our conversation And this is now for you listening, all of you listening, who have ever struggled to answer the question, what is my life's purpose? What is my life's purpose? One of the most complicated, most misunderstood, most confusing questions for most people. 
Um, and I think it's one of those things that always will confuse people. So I want to help you alleviate some of that confusion today. And I want to help you understand better how you can find yours. I'm not claiming to be your life guru or some spiritual savior. I'm definitely not a monk. I'm not a religious leader or anything of the sort. So I'm just going to preface this by saying that. All right. What I am, though, I am someone who feels a strong sense of certainty, a strong sense of clarity, a strong sense of overwhelming confidence about who I am and where I'm going. I'm very clear about who I am and where I'm going. So in short, I'm very clear on what my purpose is because that's all that question means, right? All that question means is, what are you here to do? Why are you alive? You got to be able to answer that question. If you're going to be a leader, if you're going to lead people on your team, if you're going to lead your teammates, if you're going to lead your, your parents, your brothers and sisters, if as a coach, you're going to lead your players, if as a, a, you know, an employee, you're going to lead your fellow employees, you're going to influence those around you. You have to know why you're here and it's got to be tangible. People got to feel it. So my intentions, my goal, my purpose for doing this podcast episode is for you to ultimately find your life's purpose. And I believe we can do that as, as, as early as through this episode. Honestly, it's a question that's that's highly overly complicated and it, it causes a lot of problems for people. And it did for me as well. But you got to be able to know what your life's purpose is. But before I go into it, I want to share a story with you, all right? When I was in high school, so I grew up, I was third out of four boys, right? My dad was from Nigeria, came here when he was 18. He was a soccer guy, right? He loved soccer. So we all played soccer, naturally. Now, up until sixth grade, when I was in sixth grade, I was starting to get a little chubbier. And honestly, I hated to run. Like, I was beginning to dread going to soccer practice. It's funny, though, because I actually loved playing soccer, and I really loved playing indoor soccer. I was what we call a striker. I don't know if they still call soccer players strikers, but I was a forward. And I remember I was really good at what we call crossing, you know, like where uh, I think I was a right, you know, I was a striker on the right. And my, my job was mostly I would score goals, but a lot of times I would, I would cross it into the middle and make assists for other guys to score goals. Anyway, I love playing soccer, but I hated running. And so it was at this point that I decided I was going to play football. And so I got into football when I was in seventh grade, and I absolutely fell in love with football. Like, I loved it. I, I, don't, I can't really explain it all the way. I was just like, this is the coolest sport ever. I get to blast people. You know, we're on this big team. You know, there's all these different, you know, aspects of it. Playing in games was, like, unreal. I, it was awesome. So I love football. So eighth grade... I planned on going to high school at this, at this local public high school called Lincoln High School here in Portland. But my dad uh, decided to put me in a private school. And I was really upset, honestly. Like, I was really, really upset. He told me in the middle of the summer. So just imagine, you know, me and my friend. I remember me and my friend Jacob were so excited because we were both going to go to Lincoln. And we were like, yes, bro. Like, we're gonna be, let's try to get the same classes. We're going to play football together. We're going to hoop. All of this. And my dad decided to put me in a small private school, and I was hot. And not only that, the private school did not have football. So I'm like, so you mean to tell me I got to go out to this private school way out in the suburbs with all these people? None of them look like me. They don't play. There's no football team. No friends here. Come on, pops. But listen, I had a feeling I had a feeling in my stomach that said I needed to play football. It was a feeling because practically it made no sense for me to still play football. I had to take the bus for an hour across town in order to get to my local high school. So that's what I would have to do in order to play football. And not only that, practice started at 3.30. We get out of school at 3. So how am I going to do it? But I begged my dad, please, dad, let me play football. Please, because I had this feeling. They let me play football. I would get on the bus every day after school. A lot of times I would leave early. My, my Spanish teacher would let me leave early. He was a really cool dude, and he really liked football. <laughs> so he let me leave early, and I would get to practice. A lot of times I would get to practice late, but I loved it, and I excelled in high school. I had a feeling. 
I had a feeling. That's where it started. I had a feeling. All right. So stick with me. When I was at Oregon State, same similar situation. I was a walk on there and it was a cool gig. Right. Meaning I actually played. I got good playing time, but I didn't have a scholarship. And so I had a feeling in my stomach that said, yo, there's something better out there for you. Even though people were telling me, hey, dude, why don't you just stay here, man? Like, this is a cool situation for you. Walk on, you know, Pac-10. It was Pac-10 at the, at the time. Now it's Pac-12. But I had a feeling, and that feeling was like, yo, there's something better out there for you. So I moved on it. Got a scholarship to Portland State. But still, stick with me. Same thing. At Portland State, I had an All-American season my senior year, but I busted up my wrist. And I know you guys probably have heard me tell this story before, but I'm I, wanted, I want to drive this point home. I had a feeling, after I busted up my wrist, I had a feeling in my gut that football was not over for me. That was a feeling that I had. It was a feeling. And that made me train my ass off, ultimately get picked up by the New Orleans Saints. Fast forward, done with football. Coaching at a local high school. I had a feeling in my gut that said, hey, man, these kids here, they really need to be coached. They're not being coached right. So let me take them up, on, let me take them up under my wing. Let me take them to my gym, Pace, here in Portland, and start training them. I had a feeling. And again, when I was training athletes, that evolved into a business, right? Started uh, making a business out of it. That involved, that evolved. And when I was training my athletes, I had a feeling in my gut that said, yo, this is not what I need to be doing anymore. I do not need to be training these guys on how to lift and how to do footwork drills. They need something more. And I don't know how this is going to work. I don't even know if people pay for this kind of stuff, but I know what they need. By the way, at this time, I didn't know what a podcast was, but I had a feeling. And I ran with it. And I started implementing a lot of these mindset shifts, a lot of these strategies, a lot of these systems started being honed, started being developed, started being researched, started being created. I had a feeling when I met my wife, I had a feeling she already had a daughter. I already had two sons on paper. It didn't look like it should work out. I wasn't looking for for a girlfriend at the time. I definitely wasn't looking for a girlfriend who already had a kid who was eight years old. But guess what? I had a feeling. I had a feeling that this was my wife. This was her. Like, like, it was a feeling. That's all. So why am I telling you all this? Your purpose is not going to be whispered in your ear. It's not going to appear in a scroll, in a bottle. It's not going to be delivered to you by a dove. A minister can't tell you. Your parents don't know. I certainly don't know. Only you know. And the way you're going to know is a feeling. A purpose is not a set of words. It's not a cute one-liner. It's not a tagline like, I'm here to achieve. And it's, That's not what it is. And I'm not knocking it if, that, if that's what your purpose is. But my point is, the purpose is not a set of words. Your purpose is a feeling that you'll get. My purpose was made clear to me through a feeling that I got. And it only clarified further by action. And it changes. It evolves. It's ever expanding. No one goes through life with the same purpose. There could be a purpose in this moment. It could be a purpose this year. It can be a purpose for your life in general, the theme for your life. However, even that can evolve. Even that can change. The only way you gain clarity is through action, though. It's through movement. Through momentum, you can't wait to move on your purpose once you find it. You can't say, I don't know what to do. Once I find out what to do or what I'm, what I'm here to do, then I'll move. No, you got to move right now. <laughs> your purpose is a feeling. It's not a set of words. It's a sense. It's a sense of what to do next, what to be, what to give, what to become. How you word it is entirely up to you, but it's got to make sense to you. It can be a sentence. It can be a paragraph. It can be a picture. I don't care what it is, but it's got to make sense to you. It's got to resonate with you. 
And you know what it is, man. I, I, I just mentioned this on a couple podcast episodes ago. We're like, yo, we, we like wait on God to like tell us what to do. We always say like, you know, oh yeah, I'm just waiting to hear the sign or hear the word. You already got the sign. God already told you. God's actually already inside of you. He's talking to you all day. But you, you don't listen to him. You know why? Because you're talking all day. Your conscious mind, your rational mind is talking all day. That's why you need to shut him up and listen to the gut, your intuition, the feeling that you have on what to do next. And you know what it is. So let me ask you, what is your purpose right now? What's your purpose? Don't say you don't know. You know it's a feeling. But let's say you got your, your purpose mapped out in a set of words. If you don't act on it, it means nothing. Your purpose is an emotion. And emotions lead to action. So if your purpose are a set of words and you have no emotion attached to it and you're not moving, you're not getting results, it means nothing. Words don't cause, cause action. Emotions cause action. Words can only trigger, right? Trigger those feelings inside of us. So this is important. So let me give you some baseline rules for how to find it, how to, how to discover your life purpose, if you will. And this is, not, this is not a formula. I'm not here to give you some... You know, this is actually, this is one of these episodes where it's going to be left up to you. It's a feeling. And I can't tell you what that's going to look like, honestly. But stick with me at the end. I'm going to tell you what my life's purpose is and how I came up on that and the emotion behind that, which includes why you're listening to me on this podcast, which includes the work that I do and how everything ties together for me. So I'm going to tell you in a little bit. But first, let me give you some baseline rules. All right. Number one, look at what you're naturally drawn to do. What have you always done? What do you love to do? What, what are the type of things that you love to do without even being asked? What lights you up? This often is a good indicator about the direction in which you should go. Again, I don't care how you word it. It's more about the feeling of the direction that you should go. You know what lights you up. You know what really excites you. And one of the worst things that you can do is silence that. Because it's not practical. or oh, No, that's the conscious mind. You got to be quiet. The conscious mind. Listen to the, to the subconscious. Listen to the God inside of you. A good question to ask is, at this stage of your life, what does it feel like you must do now? What does it feel like you must do now? What does it feel like you must become now? How must you evolve now? Now, right now. One of the worst things that you can do is start comparing your purpose to other people. Start looking at other people like, no, what, what is it that you're here to do? Maybe it's become the best student you can possibly be right now. Maybe that's your life's purpose right now. Maybe it's to absolutely dominate college football. Maybe that's your purpose. I don't know. You got to define that. Maybe your purpose is to be a, the most amazing father that you can be. Maybe your purpose is to become filthy rich. And then I would say, well, why do you want to become rich? Because I want to help a lot of people. Well, maybe your purpose is to help a lot of people. How do you word it? Doesn't matter. It's got to be a feeling, though. You can't look to mom and dad or other people to make you clear either. You can't look to them. They are able to help you only through helping you engage in conversations, things like that, but they can't, they can't determine that for you. So some habits that I would start to engage in to help you get a lot of clarity, because what we're really saying is, how do you get clarity on what to do, on who to be, Right? Some of the things that help me gain clarity is frequently identifying what I want at each moment. So that means days. I set goals for the day. I set goals for the week. I do a lot of self-analyzing. I analyze myself. I journal. I spend time thinking. I actually spend time sitting in a chair just thinking. That's it. Eyes open, thinking, asking myself questions, answering those questions. Because by doing that, I come to find out who I really am. I know myself more. Think of all the people that we spend time with throughout the week. How much time do we spend with ourselves, sitting, talking to ourselves? We talk to other people. How come we can't talk to ourselves? This helps us gain clarity, and we're more easily able to identify what our life's purpose is. Meditating is critical. What meditating does is trains you how to quiet your conscious mind. Quiet it, because it's always talking. Maybe you've tried meditation and you found that you can't sit still. 
That's what we all experience. The mind, the Dalai Lama says in his book, uh, what's the book called? Beyond Religion. He says the mind is like a wild horse, like literally. You got to tame it. But before you tame it, you got to get to know it. You, like, you, it's, it has to be able to trust you. So you got you to gotta be patient. A wild horse, man, you, it takes some patience sometimes. But it's a great goal to be able to sit down quiet, to be able to quiet your conscious mind and start to listen to the feelings that come up. You'll gain clarity by doing that. And it's not sexy. It's certainly not something that you're going to see fast results with. It's something you got to invest time and energy into and consistency with. But it will pay off. You will start to gain more clarity. So those are some habits. Those are some, some things you can start to do in order to get clear. Some questions to ask yourself. But here are also, honestly, some things that I found that will prevent you from really being clear about what your life's purpose is. All right? And these are, really, these are not to be played with. Um, these are to be taken serious. These are things that I've experienced in my life. That I've seen others experience as well. Grown people still not sure on what their life purpose is. And one of those things are the parents who do all the thinking for you. All right? The parents who do all the thinking. The, one, the parents who are always telling the kid what to think, what to do. Luckily, my dad did not do that. My dad didn't do a lot of that. And that's why at every stage of my development, I felt good about listening to what I was feeling because if I was a kid whose dad always told him what to do and what not to do, I probably would begin to believe that I couldn't trust myself and that I had to rely on others to tell me what to do. But I'm blessed that I didn't have that. Now, my dad did, did make some decisions for me, obviously, by making me go to a private school. He very much valued education. But he never t limited me on what sports I could play. Didn't even limit me, honestly, about friends I hung out with, had good friends. He let us be ourselves, and that's valuable. The next thing that will prevent you from finding your life's purpose is too many vices, too many addictions. Food, sex, drugs, music, negative influences, friends, video games, addictions. They cloud your real vision. They indulge your ego mind too much, your conscious mind. You got to quiet that. They cloud your real vision. Get rid of the vices. The next thing is negative, unfruitful influences, all right? Your purpose is not going to surface. It's not going to come clear to you in your current status quo. That's why I talk about movement, right? You got to take action. You got to move. And, by, and through the movement, you gain clarity. Old friends, old influences, tired influences don't help you move. Now, when I say negative influences, I'm not talking about people who are quote unquote bad for you. There are some people out there who aren't quote unquote bad for you, but they're bad for you and your vision and your goals because they're not helping you grow. They're not helping you expand. All they're doing is perpetuating the status quo, what's always been. They're seeing you the same ways that you've always been. You can't do that. You got to get out of those. You got to get out of that web. And I'm not telling you to cut people off. I'm just telling you to maybe cut them off temporarily. Maybe spend some time on your own. Maybe get around some new people who are going to help you move, help you grow, help you gain some clarity. The bottom line is this, all right? Your purpose is a lot clearer than you think. It's actually right in front of you. You already know what it is. And if you don't know, stop saying that you don't know. Start moving. Start doing you don't know your life's purpose, then right now your purpose is to find your purpose. That's a great purpose. So move on that. Whatever your purpose is, it's an emotion, right? So that emotion's got to be strong. It's got to resonate with you, and that's going to move you to do things, to move. So at the end of the day, you know what your purpose is. And don't necessarily worry about finding a cute one-liner or anything like that. That will come with time. And also know that your purpose is going to evolve and it will change over time. It will change. So I told you my journey, <laughs> all the feelings that I had. And I was never always able to put words on it, honestly. I wasn't able to explain all the time why I'm doing this. Why, why is it that I just love football? You know, but if I was able to speak for myself, 
you know, when I was in, in college at Oregon State, let's say, my purpose, honestly, was be, to become the best football player that I could become. And that sounds corny, I know, but that feels real to me. Like, I get chills right now just saying that because that's actually how I literally felt. I felt like, yo, I really need to get really good at football. Like, I love this game. I really want to be the best. I want to become the best that I can be. I don't even know how good I can be. So I would, I would improve. I would watch film. I would run. I would, I, would, I would explore. That's what I felt like. It was a feeling. It, it, didn't nobody give me that and write it down and say, your purpose? Didn't no, no one told me that. None of my br brothers played football. It was not a family sport. I loved football. That was my purpose at that time. But I don't play football no more, right? So what if I thought my purpose was etched in stone and now I got, you know, injured, get released from the Saints, try to get back onto some teams, didn't work out. That would be, that would be a source of uh, true depression, right? Knowing my life's purpose and then having it now not be my life's purpose and there's no way for me to fulfill that. Your purpose evolves. So my purpose now, I'm going to tell you my purpose, the same purpose that I write down every single day. Every day I write down my purpose two times a day. I write it down morning and night. And guess what? It sounds right and it feels right. I got the language down and it feels good to me. It feels good. I think about it. It frames all my actions. It frames the way that I think. It determines what I do and what I don't do. It actually fuels my actions. It's an emotion. It's not the words. So my purpose is threefold, all right? My purpose is to overcome fear. To overcome fear. We all deal with fear. I deal with fear. But what I found is that my purpose here on this earth is to overcome that fear. And again, I get chills when I say it to you because I deal with fear just like you. I deal with doubt, anxiety. Am I going to be able to get it? Can I do this? Is this possible? But my purpose is to overcome it. So when I feel it, I feel strong. Like, yo, I got to get through this. I got to figure out what's on the other side of this fear. Because there's truth on the other side of this fear. Fear is a lie. Fear is an illusion. My purpose is to overcome fear. Secondly, my purpose is to, is to connect with God. Connect with God, with nature. Because I believe that once I get through that fear, that's when I'm aligned with God with nature, with the universe, whatever you call it. I'm aligned with universal, what does he call it? Uh, the storehouse of infinite intelligence. Napoleon Hill says, whatever you want to call it. My purpose is to connect with God, to be one with him, not to be scared in my ego mind, to connect with God. And thirdly is to build fearless leaders. So you see the evolution? I've overcome fear. That's my purpose. I'm connected with God and then ultimately help other people become fearless, to build leaders out of people, to make them fearless. And that's why I do this podcast. My purpose felt right to me. I discovered my purpose. I found it. I created it. No one told me what it was. I felt it. And it's not words. It's a feeling. But these words feel right to me. And that's why you hear me the way that you do. That's why you hear me show up on this podcast the way that I do. That's why I record content in the, at the rate that I record. That's why you wonder why I keep dropping podcast after podcast. I will never run out of things to say. I will never run out of content because this is my life. I live this. I breathe this. And you feel that. That's why you're listening to this. Because if, if you didn't feel that, you wouldn't listen to this because you don't have the time. You got your own goals. There's like a million podcasts out there. You would listen to that. But that's why people tell me there's no other podcast that I listen to. I listen to yours every single day. And there's episodes I've listened to 10 times in a row. That's what they tell me. And it's not because of me and I'm cool. No, it's because me and my purpose are aligned. <laughs> I know my purpose. And it just so happens that our lives are intersecting right now. My purpose is connecting with your purpose in life right now. So maybe your purpose is to make that team. Maybe it's to gain financial freedom for your family. 
Maybe it's to go to the NBA. So your mom will never have to worry about money again. You know, I, was just, I got my kid, my son, Deron, I got him a couple books for Christmas. And there were two books. One of them was the about LeBron James. It was like this little uh, storybook about LeBron, LeBron James and another one is Steph Curry. I was reading him the LeBron James one the other night. And it was the first time I read him this since I got him this book for Christmas. And I had never read the book. I just bought it. I thought he would like it. He loves hoop. And I was reading it, man. And I was learning about LeBron James' story and how his mom <laughs> didn't have no money growing up. He was moving from house to house, staying at home while his mom was at work, while he was eight years old, not going to school, being embarrassed when he goes to, when he goes to school because he's so behind. And then he finally started playing basketball, playing football. And of course, he was crushing, right? Because he's LeBron. So anyway, the story goes on. You guys know LeBron's story. And then at the end of the book, it talks about how now he is giving back. And he started a foundation helping other kids and families. And I, I'm not a dude who cries, I promise you. And I don't necessarily take pride in that. That's actually something I'm trying to learn how to do more. Um, I almost teared up reading that with my son the other day because I was like, yo, LeBron found his purpose. He found his purpose in life and it's through basketball. He's now helping other people. And that's why he plays basketball the way that he plays basketball with the passion, with the energy. It comes from that purpose. It's real. That's why he went back to Ohio. So he can bring them a championship because it was that real to him because he knew that Akron made him who he was. I'm not going to speak for LeBron. We'll interview LeBron soon. <laughs> My point is. Your purpose can light you up. You're going to you'll find it, but you got to find it through action. And when you do, you're going to have passion, you're going to have energy, you you will never lack motivation. You have other problems, but you will not lack motivation if you are connected to your purpose. You will not lack energy and motivation. No. You will not stop if you know your purpose and you're aligned with it and it resonates with you. So your task is, is, is easy. Right now, honestly, I want you to take out a piece of paper and just decide what your purpose is. Don't wait for no one else to tell you. Just decide. What is it right now? What is your purpose? It could change. It's not going to be tattooed on you. It could change. Just decide right now. What is your purpose right now? Who is it that you need to become, do, have, give, share, experience right now? What is your purpose here on this earth? Why are you doing this? Why? What is your purpose? Write it down and then move. Move on it. Find a way to word it in a way that resonates with you, but ultimately move. And guess what? You'll find more clarity. You'll, you'll hear yourself. You'll hear your real self. Meditate, read, learn, grow, and expand. You find your purpose through expansion, through growth. All right? So I hope this helped. I know this wasn't, you know, a step-by-step -step process. I'm all over the place, giving all sorts of, you know, stories and examples. Honestly, but I, I, I felt the need to record this podcast episode. I felt it. I feel it. When I meet people, I feel their lack of clarity. I feel their lack of purpose. I feel it. And my purpose is to help people overcome that fear and to build people who are fearless, help build fearless leaders so you could be fearless, so you could show other people how to do the same thing. It's possible for you. It's not far away. It's here in you right now. You, you know your purpose. So write it down, act on it. All right? Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's do this. Let's not stop. Approach each every day like it's the Super Bowl. Every day. Morning, juiced, ready. Then it's game time. Night, we celebrating because we just won the Super Bowl. Tomorrow, we do it over again. Life is not no marathon for me. I don't use that analogy. Life is a series of Super Bowls for me. And I'm excited about it. I love it. I'm not telling hey, if you, if you look at life like a marathon, that's cool. As long as it feels right to you. It's got to feel right. I don't like marathons. That's why, that's why I say that. <laughs> if I love marathons, maybe it would be. Maybe, maybe it'd be a triathlon. I'm not a fan of those either. Life 
is a series of Super Bowls for me. And I'm winning. Let's win together. All right? I love you. Keep going. I would love for you to email me your life's purpose as well. I, love I shared mine with you. Share it with me. Share it with me. NIYI.SOBO at gmail.com. Email me. I love to hear from you. Sometimes I have a hard time writing back to everyone, but I always read every email. I do read every email. So I appreciate you. I love you. Keep doing it. Leave a review on this podcast if you, if you like it. If you listen to this podcast, just leave a review. Go check out the Get Your Mind Right podcast. It's up as well. Hey, we moving. Let's go. Thank you for tuning in to the Sports Motivation Podcast. Make sure if you dig in the podcast, go and subscribe so you can always get the latest episodes. I come out with a new episode twice a week on Tuesday and Friday at 3 a.m. Eastern. And make sure you go ahead and rate it and leave me a good review. As always, I appreciate you tuning in and I'll talk to you soon. Much love. Yo, one of the most common questions I get from athletes all the time is this. What is the single best thing I can do to reach my goals? How can I set myself apart from everybody else? Obviously, there are a lot of things, but the one thing that's helped set me apart was having a coach, a mentor, someone to show me the right strategies and how I need to do things specifically to achieve my results. So you could try to do it on your own, but you'll end up making many mistakes that could have been avoided if you had someone guiding you and coaching you along the way. 99% of athletes in the world have, have expert coaches to show them the things that they can't see. If you want to work with me as your coach, I want you to go to imnotyou.com forward slash SRC and learn more and sign up for a free coaching session. I'll give you 60 minutes of my time for free and I can teach you some dynamic strategies plus show you how you can secure me as your sports results coach. All I ask is that you fit in this criteria. You're serious about your sport. You're willing to invest the time and money, and you have clear goals of taking your game to the next level or some sort of specific results you want to achieve. This is definitely not for everyone, and I have very limited spots available for this. So if this applies to you, I want you to take action. Go to imnotyou.com forward slash SRC, and I guarantee you're going to take your game and your career to the next level.